So we're about to create a brand new Pirates of the Caribbean um, chapter. We're taking the universe and creating a brand new story set before the films. Since we're creating a Pirates of the Caribbean game, it's really important to us to ensure that it feels like an authentic experience. We need to appeal to the Pirates of the Caribbean fans. So you'll see some locations like Tortuga um, and Port Royal that you'd expect, but likewise we've got license to expand the universe. So we're creating many new towns. You'll be able to sail throughout the whole Caribbean and also explore many undiscovered islands and meet many, many people that you haven't experienced within this world before. The great thing about this game is we have an awful lot of creative freedom to a be able to extend the brand, extend the universe, and we're working very closely with the franchise and the theatrical departments to ensure that we fit within that universe, but we're extending it. Something that allows us to bring in new characters, because there's so much backstory, there's so much lore in this world, that we're enabled to actually tap into that. Propaganda is really focused on creating great action RPGs, and it's a long-term goal of ours. We spent over three years developing great tools, and understanding what really makes great RPGs. We really believe we can extend the boundaries of action RPGs, so we'll be focusing on great, great accessible things like land combat. But likewise, we're really trying to drive the ship experience, something that's not been done before in the game. We're really putting you right on the helm of the boat so you can actually experience what it is to sail, to have those epic ship battles. The major choice in this game, like all RPGs, is to enable you to make a decision whether you want to become a legendary pirate or a dreaded pirate. Dreaded is akin to being where you're feared throughout the world. You have a sense of foreboding as you go through the towns and all the characters and every, everything within the world will react accordingly. Likewise, legendary though, is the more sort of swashbuckling type of hero. He's got that sort of swagger. He'll go into the town, everyone will know him. He'll have like two girls on each arm. The most important thing about any RPG is the concept of choice. What's really, really important for us is to ensure that those choices have consequences. We want to make sure that when you make a decision, you really have to think about it. And then once that decision is played out, the game evolves, whether it be through the story, whether it be through the characters you meet, whether it be the abilities and the way the game unfolds. We really want to make sure that you are able to play the game you want to play. We're trying to really push um, our combat experience, making it really accessible. We've taken nods from things like even God of War, for example, which is a great example. We don't want to go that far because we want to make something a lot more accessible. But we're making sure there's a lot of depth, a lot of choice. It's very actiony. It really plays out the legendary or the dreaded choice that you make. So we want you to experience a different game. If you go the legendary route, it needs to feel like you're very mobile, you've got a lot of agility, you're rolling around, you're sort of swinging your swords. Whereas with Dreaded, what we actually want to do is a feeling of you're grounded, you feel really powerful, really forceful. And that's reflected in the weapons you've got. You primarily use an anchor, and you use that, and it really embodies a sense of power, basically. As you start to play the game, you'll continue to level up, obviously. As that, you'll get access to new abilities. Like any RPG, there's a really deep and complex tree. But the great thing about that is it lets you choose which abilities you want to use, and you can augment them however you want to really play the game as you wish to. So ship combat within our game is, is something that hasn't been seen before. We allow you to sail through the whole Caribbean. But what we try to do is, again, make it very actiony, but make you be able to read what's in front of you. We've got different types of ships, different types of factions, and they all react and attack you differently. But likewise, the ship combat is quite straightforward in terms of the ability to aim at the the hull or maybe the sails. And these affect different things. So if you obviously take out the enemy ship sails, the boat will ultimately not be able to sail around, making it very easy, basically a sitting duck. And we're trying to apply that, that sort of rock, paper, scissors thing to everything we do with the ship combat. It's something we're really excited by. This, this game is bigger than anything I've ever worked on before, it being an RPG that's expected. We've got over 100 hours of gameplay, there's multiple quests. Um, the main quests alone you can replay, and we're really ensuring that that main quest, if you play it again, that it's very different, it's a very different experience. Although the story will unfold in a similar way, the actual way you approach the quest is very different because of the legendary dreaded nature of it. But I think the key thing for us is that idea of really playing up the choice and the consequence. So there will be multiple endings in this game which play out very, very differently. Throughout the game, um, initially we're going to teach you how to play it early on, but then the game opens up. We basically open you up to explore the whole world. There's so many different types of quests that's 
it's crazy. In fact, well, you, can, you can do the classic pirate things. We're really trying to get a sense of adventure. So you can go hunting treasure, go hunt people, you can transport people. Um, <laughs> there's some crazy stuff as disguising your stuff to get into a party, into a big ballroom scene. There's ways to actually storm prisons. There's so many different and so much variety in this game. It, it adds to that depth, it adds to that richness that you would expect in an RPG. Replayability for us is a huge consideration. We're making sure that as you play through the game, if you make a choice to go legendary, you can replay it and play dreaded. That changes the quest, it changes the story, it changes the abilities you get access to. You'll be able to talk to certain people, because certain people in the world will react to a legendary person really well, but they may hate a dreaded person, so they won't even talk to them, they'll cower away or even run away. So it's really important for us that the choices you make progress the story, but in your own way. And so the problem for us is creating this really complex narrative that still all ties together depending on how you want to play. As much as we want to play up the replayability, we have to consider we, want to, we don't want to create two totally separate games. We want you to experience this new chapter in the Pirates of the Caribbean world. Um, so what we try to do is have a similar thread, but you can execute it very differently. What it really means though is we are almost creating two separate games. Then when you add on to that, we not only have your classic la on land experience that you would expect in an RPG, we then open up this whole ship sailing and combat experience, which means then we've kind of almost got like four separate games, which is kind of a crazy idea. But I think for once you'll really understand what replayability really means. Pirates of the Caribbean, Armada of the Damned, will be available in early 2011 on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and PC.